After saving $100,000 at age 25, Tori Dunlop quit her job with corporate America, and now she's using what she learned to teach other women about personal finance. She founded her first 100K, which offers investing workshops and more. She also hosts the number one business podcast, Financial Feminist. And she is about to release her first book, Financial Feminist, later this year, and she joins us this morning live. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. We appreciate it. So for people who don't know you, uh, you know, when I think back to age 25, I was lucky to have a couple hundred bucks in my checking account at any given time. How were you able to save $100,000 at age 25? Yeah, it was a couple different things. First thing, privilege. I had parents who, you know, helped me save for college or contributed a little bit. It was very much a collaborative process. Um, I really got focused on priority-based spending. So I only spent money on the things that really brought me joy. I also started investing when I was 21. I opened up a Roth IRA and also built her first 100K on the side of my nine to five. So anything that I made in my business after taxes and expenses went immediately into my savings account. Yeah, we hear about, you know, obviously 401Ks, Roth IRAs, you want to max out if anything is matched. But I thought it was interesting that you also say uh, some tips to financial independence include when you have a job, negotiate your salary or hop to a new job. Yeah, I think the job hopping has gotten a bad rep, but really, I think the narrative that you need to be loyal to one company forever, it's something that keeps women, people of color, underpaid and overworked. So if a job's not treating you well, you can leave, right? And you should. You know, the, there's no loyalty that a job or a company has to you. And you need to apply the same principle where if they're not, you know, the position's not serving you anymore, if they're not compensating you fairly, it's time to either ask for more money and or find something else. You also write about uh, so-called money myths. One in particular jumped out at me that credit cards are dangerous, that myth. Uh, you can think of a lot of examples when people get into some really serious uh, credit card debt. So what do you mean there? Yeah, so credit cards are, I kind of equate them to like knives. Knives can cut you if not used properly. They're also used to make like a yummy veggie stir fry. So if you can manage your credit cards responsibly, meaning that you pay your balances on time and in full, you don't carry a balance on your credit card month over month, credit cards are an amazing tool. I actually don't even own a debit card. I put everything on credit and then I just pay it off every month. And then I have enough points to send me to Europe three times and back. So as long as you use credit cards responsibly, they're an incredible tool. We've also heard about side hustles, and you say that, so with like a second job, um, what if you're not, what if you don't have any hobbies or you're not good at anything or you don't have enough time to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think uh, for when I work with clients, I walk them through what I call the three T's, time, talent, treasure. What kind of time do you actually have for a side hustle? Is this something you can dedicate, you know, multiple hours a week, or do you just have a couple? Um, you know, it, to treasure, is it, is it something that you want to see immediate money from? You know, do you want to be able to earn money right away? For me, running a business, I didn't see money for a very long time. I didn't see money for two or three years. But now, you know, we're doing great for ourselves. And then time, talent, treasure, which is like, you know, with talent, what sort of skills do you have that you can leverage? So for me, I was a social media manager in my nine to five. It made sense to also take on clients outside of that to do social media for them. So those are the kind of three things I walk people through when you're deciding about what side hustle is right for you. All right, Tori, thanks so much. The book is called Financial Feminist. It's available now for pre-order, and you can also check out Tori's website, first100k.com, for more information. And there's her social media links there, too. Thanks, Tori. Thanks for having me.